And good evening. How are we doing? How are we doing? I've got the uh, the microphone right under my nose tonight. It feels really strange for it, to, for it to be right here. It's normally further out a bit, but it's right there because I have this where the microphone normally kind of sits. Look at it. Look at why is that so dark? Hold on. I remember I turned my light down last night. Let me uh, let me brighten that up a little bit. Wait, wrong way. There we go. Oh, angle it up. There we go. There we go. A lovely key light there. We've got a lovely ZX Spectrum to be playing on tonight. So yes, the original, the best. Um, hey, has how's it going? Happy Sunday to you as well. Hello, Badger. Welcome on in. Also, hi, Shark. Uh, you found my new redeem, which I have uh, put there for any new followers who who don't want to actually chat, who just want to lurk, but also want to say hi. Uh, you know, just to say, hey, we're not a bot. <laughs> you can smell the retro. You can't smell it, is it? Smells of plastics. Smells of plastics. Um, this is actually um, not the one I had as a kid. I, I bought this a few years ago um, because I missed it. I missed it. Uh, but yes, we're here. Um, to honour the life of Sir Clive Sinclair, who died l not last week, the week before now, at the age of 81. Um, and he was... Uh, yes, thanks, Haz. <laughs> and he was um, a, a great British inventor who, for a start, he invented the pocket calculator. Uh, and he... Uh, I don't know whether he invented he's, he was certainly one of the first people to create uh digital wrist watches um and his most famous invention was the 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 zx spectrum um a popular kit computer from the the early 80s and uh and it kick-started the the british games industry uh so without without sir clive uh, i don't think the british games industry would be anything like it is today um Without him, I don't think... I mean, like, we still had the Amstrad. We had the Commodore 64 over here as well and the BBC Micro and stuff. But um, an important piece of history, the one that you also often hear um, touted, is that due to E.T. and Pac-Man and all those bad Atari games, that there was the big video game crash and it all crashed and then Nintendo came along with the NES and saved everything. That didn't happen over here. Um, we, we knew nothing of it. We were too busy playing with our Spectrums and our Armstrads on our Commodores to notice that video game crash. Um, so yeah, Sir Clive, very influential. Um, now, this this exact model, the the grey plus two 128k memory model, was actually um, not a Sinclair model. It was... It was the first model that was put out after he sold out to uh, to Lord Alan Sugar. Yes, that one. Hit him of Amstrad. Um, but it is probably the best one. It's probably the best model, if I'm going to be honest. Um, uh, in terms of power and compatibility. The ones after that um, it were proper Amstrad. In that they were used, used like the cheapest materials possible and parts possible. So they're not quite as robust or as uh, compatible with the games but this one this one's fantastic the clive sinclair the inventor of the zx spectrum love him um so yeah because i i realized just as i was talking then that i didn't actually have my uh my games so i i quickly went and grabbed them Whoa. oh hello here are the games here's a game ultimate play the game now known as rare Yes, that's right, that rare. You know, the uh, Sea of Thieves people, they made this. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and then we've got a few more games here as well. So we've got, we've got plenty to go through. You know, let's... Uh... But yeah, back in the day, when I, was, when I was a boy, video games used to come on a cassette tape. What? And then you'd play the tape and it would play a sound into the specky. And it would load the game through that sound. It was it was magic. It was it was pure magic, but it also took a bloody long time to load uh, anything. 
So, oh, oh. Mm. Beautiful. So, it's a matter of, uh, I do actually have a list of, of stuff to play. And to be honest, I'm not going to load most of them from tape. Uh, here's, here's a little sneak, sneak peek of one game we're definitely going to be playing. Uh, Robocop. Robocop. So, uh, this this copy of Robocop. You get the, you, I mean, like, you get the you get the tape in it. Obviously. They, they used to come in the, these really flimsy cardboard boxes. There's a tape in it there, with a sheet of paper. Yeah, I need a better place to put this. But look at this. Ah, oh, you get a poster in some of them. Look. I mean, like, when we get this room done, I might actually get a frame for this and put it on the room. Uh, put it on the wall. Put it on the room? What am I talking about? So I'll definitely play that later. Because it's one of the best games on there. Um, but I think to start... Oof! God, that's heavy. Yeah, nice poster. To start, I'm going to do a bit of self-promotion because... Um, back in 2019, I made this. Oh, where's my light? Hold on. Bring it. Bring, bring, bring the light over while I hold it up. Over. Yeah. Here we go. Does that does that work better? There. That works better. It's dark in here. I'm not used to. Oh. Higgy, Higgy too. Um, that is one Ian Higton of uh, Yo the Eurogamer video team fame, uh, and I made him a game as a joke. Uh, and then I made another game, actually, on the Spectrum as an even bigger joke. And then I I put it on an actual tape, and I sent him a copy. So, uh, without telling him it even existed. So one day it just turned up at the Eurogamer offices uh, with his name on it. And he opened it up and was very pleasantly surprised. But I, I made a whole, I mean, look at this. I went as far as printing out a, a proper instruction instruction manual. The inlay. There's only only was it four or five I made of these, and I gave them all away. Well, I kept one. I gave Ian's got two of them, and another friend's got another one. But yeah, proper proper thick card. Printed it all out. That's what I did for fun back in 2019 before the world ended. Now times have changed. Uh oh. Typical that the thing's falling apart. That, that's the old. It's old stock, new old stock. Uh, but also, we've got he, he too on that side. But also, oh, what's that crossed out he too? And I put written combat wombat. Uh, oh, that's weird. What could that possibly be? Uh, well, I'll tell you what that is a Kickstarter. Well, no, let's start at the beginning. 2019, they've just made Hickey 2. I was still on Facebook at that time. Um, so, I, I uh, advertised it on Facebook. I put it on a, a ZX Spectrum uh, Facebook group. Uh, and was like, ah, oh, ch check, check this out. Um, uh, I've made a game. And um, a guy called um, Dan, Dan Whitehead got in touch. And I knew Dan from uh, Eurogamer, because he used to write for Eurogamer. He's also written for the official Xbox magazine, and he does he does comic books as well. He's done, like, official comic books for... Well, well written them, anyway, for, like, Star Wars and Rugrats and Lord of the Rings, I think. What else? There's been a couple of other things um, I forget offhand. Um, and he was like, uh, would you be interested in making a game for me? And I was like, absolutely, yes. He, he had no idea that he, he knew me from the internet at the time because he didn't know my real name. I was, I was going under my real name on there, you know. Uh, yeah, I do, I do have a spec. I have a spec. -y. Oh, a real thing. Um, so let's go over to the, let's go over to the, there's, there's the, there's the loading screen. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll start it loading now. Oh, I've got to rewind the tape. For, rewind the tape. I've got to rewind the tape. 
so yeah, I um, he he hired me with actual cash money to uh, to make a game. Uh, let's let's see if I can find the uh, let's see if I can find the Kickstarter page. Hold on, let's uh, let's get over to here. It is here. It is. Uh, so if I go to if I go to Firefox instead. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a what's it called? A graphic novel called Hexloader. And he sent me the first couple of issues of it, um, along with a kind of spec of, of what he kind of wanted to see in the game. Um, some drawings that his son had done of what the sprite should look like. So I kind of had to, um, I kind of had to come up with them from there. Um, you know, it's it's a story set in the eighties. Uh, one of the characters is um, a, a lad who makes games for the ZX Spectrum. Um, so the idea was, as I make that game that he, that the character in the comic book makes, and then it could be given as a, a backer reward for that for that graphic novel um, for this Kickstarter that's gone live uh, on Friday. So everybody who backs it gets a copy of, the, of this game I'm about to load. Uh, whether you get just the um, oh, where's the uh, my you see, I backed. I actually, he's, he's, he paid me money to make this game, and then I promptly spent some of it on the on the book. Um, oh, go away! But yeah, it, five pound or more gets you a digital digital copy of the uh, of the graphic novel plus plus my game digitally. Um, then fifteen pounds gets a physical softback copy of the book and a digital copy of my game, and then oh, all gone twenty five pound or more. Was uh, the soft cover book, um, uh, a digital copy of the the book, and also my game on a USB stick shaped like a cassette tape. So it would actually be a, a, a USB stick, you know, that, you, that looked like one of these. Um, not exactly like this, obviously. But... Uh, and uh, oh yeah, you get a poster with the physical editions as well. But uh, but yeah, so. Uh... It's been a real thrill. Cause it's been a bit. Oh, where is it? It's down here at the bottom. You go. Oh, look. Uh, there's my name. The only other bonus extra automatically available to all tiers, both physical and digital, is one we're very excited about. A central plot point in the Hexloader story revolves around combat wombat. Uh, an 8 bit computer game created by David while he was still at high school. Where that game really exists, thanks. Uh, courtesy of developer Mr. Tom FTW. And every back will get a copy. Thank you for your support. So how about that? Oh my god, that's loud down my ear. Oh, that's going to be loud for you as well, I'm sure. That's what these games sounded like to load when they were loading. Oh, Oof. Oh. You can tell this is a home copy. But these noises that are probably deafening me and I'm going to have to turn down are... How do you describe it? Um, because it's a, it's an analog data format, it's not digital. Um, so what you're hearing, uh, hopefully quietly now in the background, uh, is basically the sound of data. Um, it's a series of micro pulses. Uh, I can't remember the exact length of them. Testing high. How's he okay there? Are we okay? But yeah, it's anyway, it's one length of pulse for a zero and one length of, of pulse for a one, basically. The chat go a bit funny, did it? I thought it went a bit quiet. <laughs> but uh But yeah, so it's it's just it's, it's basically um that, that screeching sound is basically a, a series of micropulses representing zeros and ones getting fired from the analog cassette tape into the spectrum, which then converts it digi into a digital, you know, um, into that digital binary code. And that's why it takes so bloody long to load a game. And it's the same, it's the same principle as the, uh, the dial-up modems of yesteryear as well. You'd hear the, you know, you'd hear that screech when you were connecting to the internet uh, at a much faster board rate. Than, than this ever had, but you know, it's the same idea. And if you were to use 
if you were to, uh, I think the full 48k of the base spectrum would take, I think it was 4 minutes 36 seconds to load if it was all zeros, because zeros there's a slightly longer pulse. I think that was it, something along those lines. And then for a, for a, a bigger game, for a 128k game, it's more like 8 minutes and something. Uh, and then there were games that were multi-load as well, which meant after every level you'd have to load the next level in off, off the tape. So uh, you had to be patient. You had to be patient back then. You had to enjoy the user manuals. And you'd read them about, you'd read them about ten times over before uh, before the game loaded. Uh, the importance of a good loading screen as well was uh, was understated. Uh, this loading screen was not by me either. No, it was all we knew. I mean, some some like the Commodore sixty four had a had a, uh, a disk drive, but that was notoriously slow. Oh, there we go. That wasn't so bad, was it? Whew. So this is the game I made. It doesn't have any music or anything because back when I made this, I didn't know how to put music in. Um, it's a bit late now, and even then, I don't know what music I put in. Um, but yeah, this is this is the game that that backers of uh, that Kickstarter will get. Uh, let's see. So basically, it's flip screen. You start at you, you little you you the combat wombat, which which features in the comic book, uh, and basically you've just got to go from screen to screen. And it goes from right to left just because that's how it was drawn in the comic. Uh, so I decided to copy that. Um, but the, the sprite and everything, and these um, platforms are also draw You know, I also took those from the drawings in the comic. Uh, the, the little sun, the little face on the sun I took from the comic. Uh, the, the men I'm shooting. They're, they're all authentic to the comic book and everything. So, uh, but after a few screens, it will say loop completed. I think it's the next screen, if I remember correctly. Oh no. Maybe it's this one then. It starts off really, really easy. Um, it's random if the men spawn in. Spawn in. It's random if the uh, the little angel delight balls spawn in. After the first loop, you start getting these little ghosts appear. They're, they're the kind of main monsters from the comic book. They appear in the real world. Um... But the baddies in this game as well. And then you get little... Whoa, that one's fast. It's random if they're fast or slow. Uh, and you get little men charging along at the bottom as well, uh, eventually. And if you complete enough loops, it will actually go to another graphics set. Uh, I'm going to ignore that for now. This is it. This is uh, this took um, I can't remember if it was two or three weekends to make. It is not a particularly complicated game. Ah, oh, oh, I got, I got, got. Whiskey, hi. How's it going? I am fine, thank you very much. How are you doing this Sunday evening? Yeah, it's a, bit, it's a nice little sound. Um, made using the the internal beeper of the Spectrum. Um, the program I used to make this just made that really easy, to be honest, so can't take much credit for the sounds. Boop, 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 boop. I want to see if I can make it to the, the boss I put at the end of the end of the level. It's not... It, it, oh, there's, that, there's the guy who comes charging in. <laughs> so it does get quite hectic uh, as you go further in. Thankfully, all the all the baddies, apart from the boss at the end, here's the boss. He just got to shoot his hand several times. Avoid the ball he fires out, and then he explodes, and is replaced with a portal. And it's the same again, only a sort of weird corrupted world.
I just really, I just really like how this looks, to be honest. But it's, it's kind of, I don't think I'll be comfortable selling this game properly as on it on its own accord. But uh, as oh, I can't get up there, as part of um, you know, as a little bonus for for the uh, the Kickstarter, I think it, I think it's absolutely fantastic. You know, not <laughs> to my own horn. But I think, I think, looking back, oh look, there's my name. Looking back, um. I think I did a really good job back in 2019. And I've, I've been sat. I have been sat on this game ever since. Waiting for this Kickstarter to... To, uh... To, to go. And it is... Oh, it's been absolute hell just waiting. <laughs> waiting. I wanted to talk about it so badly. And I couldn't. I haven't been caught out by those baddies yet. It's, uh... Whoa, look at them. They're having a good old dance. Oh, there we go. Death. I'll kill myself. There we go. You've reached loop number four. Final score. That is the entire game. You've seen all the game has to offer. There was just another... There was that same boss again at the end of that area. And then it loops around to the first one. And that is the entire game. Just a fun little bonus for the Kickstarter. I'm, I'm very proud of it. Um, not because it's complicated, because it isn't. Not because it's technically impressive, because it isn't. Not because it's deep and meaningful, because it isn't. But it, I think it just fits in fantastically with the, uh, with the comic book. So I'm very... We're going to need a one-back and a four-gun mode sometime. Yeah, that's, that's true, actually, isn't it? Well, I can certainly stick them in the uh, the Discord. Um, I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, Spencer. But if I just uh, unplug this for a second, um, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to load any more games off tape because that's like five minutes of stream time gone each time. Uh, instead, I'm going to use this. You see this? This is what is known as a Div MMC Future, I think it was. Div MMC, certainly. Um, and this plugs into the back of the spectrum. Hold on, let's just uh, let's go back to chat for a second. This goes into uh, the expansion I.O. port here. The little edge connector, okay? Um, but what's special about this is Firstly, uh, in the top, it's got a Kempston joystick port, so you can plug a you could plug a, a Mega Drive joystick in there, even a uh, joypad, should I say, and that would work. Uh, only one button, of course. But also, there's that little slot there. Uh, you can't really see it because it's too dark. And oh, there it is, catching light. There's that little slot there, and that fits an SD card, an SD card on a Spectrum, and my SD card there. It's got every flipping Spectrum game I think possibly ever created on it. Uh, yeah, the Mega Drive pad is fantastic. I've, I've got a load of them, um, but I'm not using them. The joystick I brought down is this one. Look at that bad boy. Look at that. Oh. Look at the colours. It clicks so. Oh, the micro switches. Mm. Play Daily Thompson on that. We're well, not playing Daily Thompson tonight. I didn't want to break anything. Um, let me just plug this in anyway. <gasps> uh, so it's no, it's not a Atari stick. It's uh, it's one made for the Spectrum. So yeah, as you can see, it's plugged into the back there. Nice three D printed case. Modern technology meeting retro technology. Um, I can't remember what it was. A cruiser. Who's um something or other? I can't remember the exact name of it. Is that coming back on? There we go. Copyright 1982 Amstrad. Hmm. Was it though? So with a, you press a button on the little device and it brings you to this to this uh, menu. So if we go into games, I've basically got an A to Z. 
Um, I, it's just it's just chocolate games. But what I've done is today, I quickly uh, and cr created some of them. Um, there's he. I might play. I might play some Hickey too later. Uh, got R type, which is fantastic. Uh, that was Combat Wombat, just in case it didn't load. Um, Dizzy there. I got Fog. Monty Python. I think what I'm going to do, though, is start with a very early game, which actually was for the the Z81, I think. 3D Monster Maze. Uh, this is possibly the earliest survival horror game. And it didn't have graphics. All the graphics in this are made up of um, of characters from the from the built-in character sets of the, of the computer. So... So what it is, as this nice man is telling you, you're going to get transported into a randomly generated maze with a T-Rex inside of it, and you've got to escape. This is not a game of those of a nervous disposition. Okay. Uh, which, which one's on this button? I forget. Shit. Oh, Dalton... I don't know. I don't know what I've just pressed. <laughs> the Mr. Times will pass over. Oh, for about thirty seconds. While trying. Okay, so it takes about thirty seconds to to generate a maze because it's super slow. I, I cannot remember what the keys are. Eventually. The mists of time have passed over me. Can you imagine they're playing this in the 80s on a tiny little black and white telly? Is it going to work? Shit. Oh no, here we go. Phew, okay. So at the bottom, it'll t it tells you uh, what the T-Rex is doing, basically. He's hunting for you. Yeah. I'm, mm. So when he when it lies in wait, he's nowhere near you. Basically, uh, is it cursor keys? It is the cursor keys, right? Okay. Here we go. So you move in blocks. So like I say, it's randomly generated. So God knows where the exit is. Well, that status at the bottom will change in a minute once he spots me and stuff. You weren't born until the end of the 80s. Well, you know. Use your imagination, is all I'm saying. That's a dead end. Rex has seen me. Uh, oh, fuck. Okay. Footsteps approaching. So I'm trying to break line of sight, basically. Oh, he's beside me. <laughs> trust, trust me, this was this was terrifying. It's, uh, I'm completely lost because I'm running away now. I have no idea where I am. You can't. You can't walk. Oh. Mm. He got me. Quite often you actually see Rex approaching. Um, but he got me from the side that time. So, But there we go. <laughs> I don't know how to go again. Oh I, bro oh. I broke into the code. I'm Leet Hacker Man. I could, I could play it again. I'm not going to. Also, one of the earlier games was 3D Death Chase. 1983! Oh, listen to that sound. I did po- um, We'll go for- God, I don't have a chance to- I've forgotten what the-
What are the, what are the buttons for this? What are the, oh my god! Oh, there we go. How do I go? How do I go right? Oh, there's fire. There's the, ah! I drove into a tree. Sometimes the challenge of these games is to figure out what the foot the buttons they've uh, they've assigned you are. So I can I figured out what's left is, but why can't I figure out what right is? A goes no no that the edit button goes. Oh what the fuck! Do you know what? I should have. Uh, I should have looked up what they're flipping. I should have prepared better, is what I'm trying to say. Let me. Uh, let me plug the joystick in. It's not really working. I'm not trying to plug it into the joystick port, that's why. There you go. Oh. So there's except. Oh! Zero. Right, zero is right. Okay, no, okay, we don't need the joystick then. Why is it. Why is it. Oh! Two. Uh, one and. One goes. One goes left, zero goes right. Oh, my god, okay. We're away at least, we're away. But this is this is this is really basic. The games did get more advanced than this, but not a huge amount by today's standard. If I'm going to be honest with you, and I, I'm having trouble even. There we go. Well, we blew one of them up. We got a blue both of them up. There we go. Next level. It's at night now. It's at night. Look, the sky went dark. It's at night. It's, it's so realistic. But, uh, th this is... It looks crap, but believe me, this was the shit back in the day. <laughs> oh, do you know what, Spencer? You've got a very bloody good point there. But as you go through the levels, you, there's more trees to shoot. Uh... This is annoying, isn't it? That that this this engine sound is. I I don't know how loud I've got it for you guys. Maybe it's it doesn't look that loud. The sound is good. Okay. It's fine. And then eventually you oh my god, so many trees. But as a as a kid in the eighties, um that was like playing playing the speeder bike uh sequence from um Star Wars. Um what's it called? Star Wars Return of the Jedi. There's tanks and helicopters too, yes, exactly. But yeah, so very basic. Um, but let's talk about the first game that I ever remember playing was... I. It was either one of the two. It was either Monty on the Run or a demo of a game called Bubble Bobble. Um, I'm going to put Monty on the Run on. Um, Monty on the Run was a th the third game in the Monty Mole series. Oh, that beeper music is... Mm. Oh, so good. Yeah, bubble bubble and I'm just about excellent. How do I... Do I have to sit for... I, have to, I think I have to... Oh, no. There we go. So, uh, Monty's on the run because he broke out of prison in the second game. Uh, the second game was terrible. People hate... People love the first one. Hated the second one, and the third one was kind of like a return to form, I think. Um, yeah, the idea... 
was basically to just get through each screen. Oh my god. Here's another thing. The games were unfairly hard. But this this is the earliest memory I have of playing games. Is this is oh shit. Oh shit. Oh no, okay, well. And as a small child, looking up at this um, little purple TV that my dad had on a uh, CRT TV that my dad had uh, on a stand on the wall, basically, and it looked it looked like about ten miles up on this wall to a small child. Um, shit! Oh, I'm, I'm I'm bad at this. Shit! Play the game again. Let me play the game. But yeah, it just captured my imagination like nothing else could, I think, really. Um... Because look at how could you not love this as, as a kid? But it's funny because um, Sir Clive, the inventor of the Spectrum, didn't see it as a, a games machine. It didn't... Oh my god. I'm, I'm embarrassingly bad at this. Um, so there's no like graphical hardware in this in this computer, um, but you get a lot of things like color clash, which is say I'll explain it to you in a minute. Actually, color clash. Find a better game to demonstrate it. Shit, 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 shit. No, okay. Do you know what? I'm not any good at that. Bubble bubble's probably the better game to demonstrate color clash with. Um. So, the way it used to work on the Spectrum is that there wasn't enough memory on the on the 48k machine to display a different color every pixel. Um, now the Spectrum was only the Spectrum was only. Uh, capable of displaying seven colours. So it was white and black, uh, yellow, blue, green, red, uh, magenta and cyan. Uh, so yeah, that's seven minus, seven minus the black. Uh, and then the only other difference was they had like a brighter version of each colour and then a, a darker version of each colour, apart from black, because obviously you can't do black darker. Um, so, what you have to do is imagine the screen split up into eight pixel by eight pixel blocks, just across the screen, and each eight pixel by eight pixel, pixel block could have two colours assigned to it. A paper colour and an ink colour. So the paper colour was the background and the ink was the foreground on each, on each thing. So, um, as sprites passed between those blocks, they would, yeah, super black, they would take, they would either take the colour of the block they were passing through, or they would, um, you know, they would put their colour onto that block, which meant you would get blocks of colour clashing, uh, and looking wrong, basically. Uh, and a lot of games kind of tried to work around it, uh, yeah, it, it, it often looked quite ugly. But what you might see is as I play through, um, sprites like taking on different colours as they go through objects and, and so forth. And that's the colour clash. That's the... Actually, it was... It's proper term was attribute clash. I love the... Yeah. I love the music as well. But yes, this is one of my earliest gaming memories is playing this game. Uh, a demo of the game, even. It was only like the first five levels or something. And I specifically remember... Ooh. Bonus. What? Mm. The fuck? Okay. I specifically remember my dad telling me to turn it off because it was time for my bed or something like that. And I just turned the TV off because I had no idea that the computer was separate. And then he came to turn it on like two days later and this, this game was still running. <laughs> and he was he told me off for that. And that, that's one of my earliest memories. Oh, 
But this was this was an arcade game. Obviously, the arcade game looked a hell of a lot better than this. Um, the the eight bit micro computers of the day, so the Spectrum, the Amstrad, the Commodore sixty four, the BBC Micro, you would often get uh, arcade games kind of ported over to it, over to them, should I say? Uh, and they were never powerful enough <laughs> to run the games, uh, even in the early days of the arcade. Um, so, by the time these, by the time these computers were getting on a bit, and arcade games were getting more and more advanced, um, oh, you got some, you got some absolute horror shows <laughs> as they tried to squeeze these big games into little computers. Um, but this is actually a really good version. It doesn't look like much, but it's um, really good fun. We getting rushed away by the water. And if you didn't have this music burned into your head by the end of the session, you were a better person than I ever could be. I imagine that's quite quiet though. I'm gonna give you some, give you a bit of juice. Jump up, there we go. And on and on and on we go. And I've played this so often, I'm, I've got, I've got decent at it. Oh shit, okay, they got me. I've got a decent at it, he says, as he instantly dies afterwards. Uh, but I've got... I've got this on tape in here somewhere. Let's see if I can pull it out. I've certainly got the sequel to it. The sequel, Rainbow Islands, is an all, also a classic. Uh, that's a fatty now, that's not... In here somewhere. Wonder Boy. I'll tell you what, these were such such simple games really considering. But because of the amount of time that oh He dead he dead, yeah. But considering the amount of time it took, took to load the games, uh you would play them and play them, basically. <laughs> Here's a little curio. The original Mario Brothers game on the ZX Spectrum. Back in the day when Nintendo would license their games out for, for other uh, computers. Um, in this case, it was a, it was licensed out by a, a very famous company called Ocean. Well, famous in the scene, you know, obviously. But, uh, that was a sequel. Now, funny you should ask. Um, but the way it worked is that Bob and Bob, the little dragons from Bubble Bobble, um, were not originally dragons. Oh, someone coming in. Okay, maybe not. Um, they were not. They were humans originally, and then a curse turned them into bubble blowing dragons. And at the end of Bubble Bobble, they turned back to humans. Uh, which is what we get in Rainbow Islands. Uh, I did not put Rainbow Islands on. I was on. Go into my own games. We'll load up Rainbow Islands. Where is it? It was in here somewhere. They're not. Oh, they're not in you. They're not in alphabetical order. That would. That would help. Uh. Rainbow... Rainbow Islands anywhere? Right. I don't know. Fine, we'll do this even harder way then. Uh, A to Z. Go to R for Rainbow. There is... Yes, if you want to see some Dizzy later on, I'll put some Dizzy. Oh, rainbow. Is this, is this right? Yeah, here we go. So yeah, instead of um, instead of being bubble, um, bubble blowing dragons, Bub and Bob were human again, and they fired rainbows instead. So 
Again, this was an arcade game. How do you get credits? There we go. First island is Insect Island. Now this is a good example of Colour Clash. Oh god. So as you can see, the sprite there is basically taking on the background colour. Because the, like I say, the spectrum can only handle two colours per... per 8x8 block. So, especially on that, you see that castle there to my right now, you can see the square blocks that are of colour around it. And that, that is attribute class, that, that is colour clash. And that is the uh, the limitations of the hardware, basically, that are coming into play. Like I said, some games really hit it well, uh, and then others just didn't fucking bother. I used to love these games. It was just they were just so jolly, the jolly music and the, the cute graphics and And my god, they were actually fun. Oh yeah, if you take too long, it tells you to hurry and then water starts rising, so you gotta get to, oh, I have to keep pressing the wrong button. Oh that's pause. Taito! Yeah! Taito, what a classic. I wonder who owns all the Taito stuff now. Uh, Bandai Namco, probably, actually, thinking about it. Because they do occasionally put out new Rainbow Islands games. Um, and they, they're always absolutely terrible. And I think they put a, a Bubble Bobble game out as well recently-ish. Yeah, I got triple rainbows now. Yeah, here we go. I'm a fucking killing machine now. Let's see if I can reach the end boss. Is is oh is it Squeenix? Okay, well that would have been my second guess, I suppose. Oh, I love this game so much, though. Oh, look at the massive amounts of slowdown. Oh, yeah. Maybe I should look up a video of the arcade game of this just to demonstrate what, <laughs> what the difference was. Let's just say it was slightly more colourful. <laughs> And it's certainly, the, the scrolling is certainly a lot smoother. Ugh. Yeah, speedy rainbows. Where are you off? So I think it's at the top of this one that we get the first boss. And that'll be about as far as I play, I think. What time is it? God, it's ten to nine already. I haven't got through half the stuff I wanted to get through already. I didn't even plan on playing this one. But, uh... I suppose Bubble Bobble is a necessity, really. I mean, like, to be honest, uh... I'm always looking for excuses to play on the Spectrum, so maybe I'll revisit the uh, the system again at some other point. Um, really, the only reason I'm playing this is because next, because I knew that next week I wanted to start a new game for Halloween, and therefore I wanted to play it in October, so I didn't want to start it tonight. And then Sir Clive's death gave me the perfect excuse to... Uh, here we go. Look at that big spider! The spider's a menace. You could... Oh, you got me. Your lag is insane. I don't think it's that bad. If you're saying, if you're saying there's a boss. Shit, shit, shit. Oh, you got me again.
Oh yeah, old games are hard. If you think Dark Souls was hard, then I shall laugh at you and say, Sir, Madam, non-binary friend, you've never played Rainbow Islands. You've never played Bubble Bubble. There we go. Probably, let's... Let's have a quick look. So if we go to... Uh, yeah, let's see here. YouTube. YouTube? Rainbow Islands. Okay, I missed what? Oh, yeah, it's Combat Island now, isn't it? Okay. So let's just switch over to Firefox quickly. Here we go. This is what it looked like. Look at that title screen, for instance. Proper. Uh, here we go. Bit different. But this was the kind of thing they were trying to port over to the home computers of the day, and, uh, yeah. Those computers really couldn't handle it, but they tried their very best. God bless them. Let's see if we can find the spider boss. Here it is. Oh, look at that. At least they did a good job of putting the music over, I think. So, in a, in a sense, it was quite impressive what they did. Anyway, I'm going to stop watching that now because I can't hear myself think because that was really loud in my ears. My arcade machines were miles ahead. Uh, what was next? Hold on, really quickly. My game fog. I made this. There we go. Da, da, da. I think everybody's seen this now. But this is the game I made this year, a few weeks back. Played on real 35 year old hardware. Very good. Okay, I'm not going to spend much. I'm not going to spend any time on that. Um. Oh yes, I spoke about Mario Brothers, didn't I? Um. Ported by Ocean, 1987. I need to find the keys quickly. Uh. Key for jump one. Q, right, left, yeah. Pug, want love? Yeah. I know, right, Spencer? Who, who's ever heard of that? But yes, it is the original arcade Mario Brothers game before Super Mario Brothers was a thing. Um, Put it over to the ZX Spectrum by Ocean Software. And I would have thought most of you would have played this. I mean, obviously not this version, but... The original arcade version, certainly. And if not the arcade version, then the, 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 the version for the NES. Is that going to kill me? I think that's going to kill me, right? Oh no, he make a fast now. Yeah, he killed, he killed me. Something that's quite interesting. I might have to... Uh... Take a bit of a visit. But, I mean, it's barely recognisable, I think, actually. I don't think this was a very good port. If I'm going to be uh, quite honest with you. Oh, shit, I did that accident. Ow. There we go. I don't, I don't think this is the best port. It doesn't play exactly great. Uh, if I'm going to be honest with you here. It doesn't look the best. sound is 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 lacking there's not even a tune to go with it but yeah this is 
that's Chris Pratt. This is this yeah, this is what the the new movie looks like. This is this is how Chris Pratt is gonna look like when he's Mario. Uh so you know, hold on to your hats. There's Donkey Kong ports and stuff on this as well, but uh well, something that's slightly interesting, if I go to modern, uh, 2018 maybe, yeah, here we go, uh, this is a homebrew version of the game, where they tried to do it better, basically, same game but better, and already, look, look at the colour. Gubby, how's it going, sweetie? How are you? Ah, uh, but look how much better this looks. Still plays like shit, to be honest. Oh, it's got the original music from the game. We've got some amazingly clever use of colour for the for the spectrum. Yeah, right, it's way better. I mean, it's way better 30 years on, but it's way better. <laughs> It feels a little cheesy that it's 30 years on. But at the same time. So much better. Don't mind you, you're lurking. That's fine, Gubby. I love a lurk. You know I'm all about the lurkers. But, I mean, like... The, the, even the sound? You mean, like, you got the little run sound that was... That you had in the game, and... Oh, shit, I'm gonna die. Yeah, I know, I know, Spencer, but uh, you've got to bear in mind now that the we've had 30 years of the scene kind of ripping the spectrum to its, its very basics. Uh, kind of, they've, they've absolutely just... I, I don't know quite, you know, how to describe it, but... You, yeah, we're looking at 30 years, basically, of this being torn down to its its transistors and understood like they couldn't possibly understood back in, the, back in the 80s. And also, you know, the tools that we use are far more sophisticated now. I might I make my games on a, on a PC, you know, and then copy, you know, get them onto the Spectrum rather than doing them on the Spectrum like they would have done back then. Uh... Oh yeah, I'll show you that later, maybe. But still, there was still some impressive stuff. If we go back to here... Um, now, do I show you Robocop? Or, uh, you know, I'll show you Robocop. Robocop... Uh, which I did, you know... I can say I do own the original version of it here. This music that you're hearing right now, hopefully hearing right now... Uh, Let's turn it on. Wait up. This music was actually stolen and used in a washing machine advert from the day. I know it sounds very basic, but it does kind of get going in a minute. So I might give it. I might give it a minute just to get going. I'm trying to put stuff away as I'm using it. There we go. And it's, it just slowly builds over time. It's just a beautiful piece of music, just on this very basic sound chip. That's not a leaderboard, Spence. That's a, That's your control options. To bed. Hold on a second. I'll leave you with this music, just a moment.
Ooh, there we go. Yeah, protect the innocent. Well, we'll hear that speech in a second. Here we go. Speech was amazing back in the day. You'd just never heard it. And then some games had speech. Little snippets. And it sounded great. And if you watch my stream regularly and you're here at the beginning while... While I've got my little video running with the starting soon screen, you might recognise this game because this game is on that video. But this game was top of the top of the, the game charts for for months and months. I think maybe over a year. Uh, it just dominated. It was such a good game. It's probably one of the best games on the spectrum. Uh, which is which is kind of wild to think about now because look, it's just black and white. Because it, you know, a lot of games to avoid the to, to avoid the uh, color clash, they would not use color. They would use these, uh, you know, they would use just two colours. Ah, oh, I've just had inspiration. I'm going to show you a really bad game converted from the arcade. But this, uh, this Robocop was a really strange one because there is an arcade version of this very game. Um, but this is not an arcade conversion. This came first and then... Data East, the arcade company, licensed licensed it uh, and made an arcade version of the game, uh, which was far more advanced, obviously. So it actually went the the opposite direction that these games normally go. I'm out of bullets. I can only punch now. Oops. Well, this was this was on every platform you could possibly imagine. It was on the uh, Amiga and Commodore and Amstrad and ah, uh, they made a big fuss fuss of it because obviously uh, Robocop was Robocop was big and shit and dead. You played it a lot in the arcade, yes. Never big, how's it going? Shit, right back at the beginning. I'll try that again. Oh, that's not a good start, is it? No! Oh my god, I'm doing worse. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and ignore most of the people in the windows. And conserve bullets best I can. No, it is leading to me taking quite a few hits. There's some baby food at least to give me some energy. Some of the baddies you can just ignore. Shoot them for points but by all means, but. Otherwise, it can oh, fuck off. <laughs> I want to get through the level so I can show the nice people here that this isn't the entire game. There's more to it. Doing better this time. There's some more baby food for me to eat. Yum yum yum. Excellent. But it's just it was just the total package this game. It had lovely music as you were playing as well. Not a lot of games had music as you were playing. Uh, it had really nicely defined graphics. It played excellently. It had that you know it had that big box with the poster in it. Uh, Robocop was a hot property at the time. So, yeah, no wonder it was dominated the charts for so long. Yeah. I think this is it. I think this is the end of the level. I've got to kill him now. And then he walks off into the background. Robocop. Oh, Robocop. And then the next level was the scene from the from the, uh, the film where he has to rescue the woman who's being uh, sexually assaulted. Now in the film, he, he shoots through her skirt and shoots the guy in the dick, which is like a fucking classic scene, but you can't do that in this. you just got to shoot him as he pops out from behind her. Uh, technically, what you can do is just shoot the woman until she dies, but you lose health doing that. Oops. 
There we go, he's dead. And then it's on to the next level. Which is a lot like the first level. And on we went, on we went. Uh, what time is it now? It's nine o'clock. I think I might show you Batman the movie. Uh, which again was an ocean game. Uh, ocean did this as well. I know she did that Mario. Yeah, I mean, like you can, you can certainly try shooting him in the dick as a pop toy. <laughs> um, I don't think I, I can't remember whether Red Two Nine actually shows up in this. You know, Nick. Uh, the Batman was a superb game. I don't think on the eight-bit versions you really got a two hundred nine. I think there might be something representing him later on, but. Certainly in this bit here. Not so much. God, that arcade game though was superb. Uh, Robocop 2, I think, was probably the better arcade game. If anyone has ever played that, it's quite a rare one. Uh, I know of three. I own three different ones. Um, there was um, a 3D Batman game. When I say 3D, it was like isometric, cutesy graphics. Um, there was Batman the Cape Crusader, which was like comic book panels, and you had to solve puzzles. Uh, and then there was the Batman the movie as well. Yeah, Batman the Cape Crusader is the one I... It's the one I was just talking about then. I might see if I can quickly show all three. Do you know what? Let's do that. So Ace's head. Uh, if we go to B... I tell you what, if I had this device when I was a kid, holy shit, you thought piracy was back, bad back then when you can just copy tapes. Uh, imagine having one of these devices. Batman. Uh, who knows which version this is? Okay. Just the keys. Okay, that's fine. Play the game. So there's a the little Batman sprite at the top there. It's like head over heels, basically. And it's based, this is based on the 60s uh, TV show, as you can tell from the music. Hey, okay, came down the bat pole. Oh, we can't jump at the beginning. Oh, shit. Uh... So the bat cave's been taken over by horrible baddies. Oh, no. I died. I'm not going to be able to show you very much of this game, I don't think. Oh my god, run away! There you go, we're fine. Yeah, the Batmobile's been split up into parts. You've got to find all the pieces of the Batmobile. Uh, and there's like different different gadgets and stuff you can find as well to help you out. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to show you very much. Oh, look at that monster. That was a part of, a bat of the Batmobile. It is, it's a good game. It is actually a good game. It looks really basic now, but it's a good game. Well, you've got to temper your expectations. You know, you've got to go in understanding that this game is from the early 80s. Right, there's a little bat. I assume that's an extra line. I don't know where I'm going, by the way. I never put all that much time into this game. But you get the idea, right? Oh, holy shit. Oh, there's the jump boots at, at the end. Okay, so I see what we've got to do here. Whoop. And now I can jump. Allegedly. Yep, there we go. Oh, I died. Anyway. I did have Spy vs. Spy. Um, I got all the Spy vs. Spy games because they were all on the cover of Trash Magazine, which I used to read every month. Um, just to give you an example. It's in my uh, little box of wonders. Can you find it? 
Can I find what map there? Probably not. No. Bear with me. Since you're asking. Oh, do you know what? Fuck it, it's not good to tell you. Uh, but yeah, Crash Magazine and your Simpler and Simpler User Magazine, they at one, uh, eventually they all started to put um, cover tapes on the on the front covers, and Spy vs. Spy was given away free. Uh, all three of them, in fact, at one point or another. Here's the one, Batman the Cape Crusader. Uh, Spy vs. Spy, not good fun if you just... Uh, just playing um, by yourself. But with two players, yes, with two players like your cousin, it's great. So this is this is much Batman was loud, wasn't it? Yeah. But they they fashioned this game again after the sixties sixties uh, show, but they also um, did it in a comic book panel style. So you got these uh, as you went through. Not too dark in there. I can't remember how to play this game at all. Oh, I can hit. I can punch. Oh, I'm back to it at the start. Fucking hell. I would love a slidey pole into a computer room. You now have the batarang. Yeah. Oh, ladder. Uh, oh, uh, oh. Yeah, it seems that way, doesn't it? Both of these games so far, Shock, have been Batman not able to get out of the fucking Batcave. So, I think he really needs to look into this issue that he's having here. Uh, how are you doing, Shock, by the way? Are you doing alright? Hey, look, there's a... You now have the Bat Bulb. It just said Bulb. I'm calling it the Bat Bulb. Can I remember where that first dark room was? How do I... I don't know how to use it. Anyway. Anyway. Let's take it back. Because the other Batman game... Was Batman the movie. Please work. Oh shit. Not working. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Son of a bitch. Again, one of the best games on the spectrum. I can't get it to work. I do have a copy of it in the box. I'm not going to wait five minutes or more for it to load. Look at that! Look at that lovely. Uh... Look, digital mouse little keys in there, represented in seven colours, or less, really. Yeah, that's not working. Oh, that's a shame. Maybe if I go... Oh, wrong way. Let's see if we can... Let's go back to the... Batman... Uh, this one? What is this? This is not an official game. This is not an official Batman game. What is it? Oh, what the fuck? This is like that first Batman game, but obviously not. What the? Oh, the controls are not good. Oh, the controls are very bad. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know what the fuck was that. <laughs> just some fella in Portugal just making his own Batman game and he's like, yeah, fuck you, whatever. What's this one? Oh, hold on.
again. Um, yeah, ocean game. It is very much like Robocop, in fact. I think they use basically the same game engine to make both games. Level 1, the Axis Chemical Plant. You see that Batman face at the bottom? As you lose energy, it turns into the Joker. Get to use the Batarang and... Oh. A swing. Oh. oh no, oh no. I'm turning into the Joker, baby. Yeah. Again, this game was the absolute shit back in the day. The music as well, the music was superb. Uh, Spencer, he's that good. He's that good that he is all the people on the leaderboard. This was never an arcade game, though, unlike Robocop. I love the way he crouches as well, look at that. Ooh. Avoid the dripping chemicals. I'm turning into Jack Nicholas as the Joker, baby. This game was as hard as nails. Yeah, yeah, it was a maze-like level as well for the start. Which didn't help. Uh, I think I'm going the right way. He says, hopefully. Oh no, I think I've just gone back on myself. Yes, I have. I really, really have gone back on myself. Of course, you can run out of time as well. Yeah, the, the music's great in this. Oh, that's not how you do it. I turned into the Joker. But later levels saw you... Driving the Batmobile around. Uh, that was good. Don't think I'm going to get to see that. I'm going to get back to back. I can't remember where to go. No, this is not the way. Oh, but yes. Well, they had to represent the life bar somehow, didn't they? I think it was quite a fun way to do it. Tell you what though, Batman's built, look at that chest. Yeah, you'll see it when he walks. It looks like he could stop a tank with that chest. What was he? Was he. He, uh, he likes to use his. Uh, he likes to use his pokes and his peaks. Oh, oh shit, no, that's not how you do it. Here we go, that's how we, I remember that, there we go. Yes, it's bat boobs, that's right. That's exactly what they were called. But next, I'm going to show you a very famous game and a very terrible game at the same time. guys make of it. Because remember I was saying that they used to convert all sorts of different arcade games to the Spectrum? Uh, with varying results. We're going to see one of the more, more variable results, I think, would be the, the way to put it. Shit! I did it again. I died. Not at the beginning, surely. No! Okay, we're continuing on. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going.
Attack by the has. Oh, bless. What's she that up to these days, then? I hope he's still with us. Whoop. Exit. Uh, sometimes I wake up in the morning and this music's playing in my head. Uh, it's just so memorable to me. Oh, fuck off. Because I played this for fucking hours. I remember Batman was Batman the movie that Tim Burton was. I think I think it was the first 12 rated film in the UK, or one of the first. And when it came out, I was too young to watch it. A load of my friends got to see it regardless. And the parents took them. My parents would not take me. We're going to come up against Jack Napier in a second. Who is the Joker baby? That's wrong, that's wrong. No, died. Oh well. That was good. Okay, on to the bad game. So yes, talking about... Uh... Oh god, where is it? Is it... Um... Did I put it on the street? The... Oh no, wait. That was my games. S -s -s no, it's not there. So I need to go there. And hope to find it, basically. So many games beginning with S that I've kind of had to split them up. And it still takes forever to load them. Oh, it's not going to show them. Fantastic, okay. Oh no, here we go. It was just being slow. S T R I want st 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 God we're even then Street What mm, what game could that be? Street I hope this is the right one is this the right one? Yes Uh oh. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> um, so 1992 was very late on in the the ZX Spectrum's life cycle. Um, we were well into the 16-bit era, obviously, because this came out on the on the Mega Drive, on the SNES, on the Amiga, on the Atari ST. Uh, but they still tried to port it over. They tried to port it over to all the. Um, uh, the 8-bit micro machines, and it was really bad. It was incredibly bad. It was distressingly bad, maybe I think would be a good way of putting it. I want to okay, do you know what? Let's, uh, let's not use keys. Let's see if I can actually... Um, Let's plug into one of these other joysticks. Oh, surely, Spencer, surely the Spectrum could not keep up with the speed of the It couldn't keep up with anything, in fact. You ready? Uh, bear in mind, okay, what I'm going to explain is going to Is this came on like three cassette tapes, I think? And you would, between each bite, you would have to find the data block for your fighter, and then you'd have to find the data block for the fighter you were about to fight, and then the background, and it would take a good 20 minutes of faffing before you got into a match, basically. Okay. 
Yeah, you can turn the background off because it's that slow. So this is obviously sped up because it's a uh, modern. This game is barely controllable. Like, I'm pressing stuff and it's nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Uh, I can just about do it with the keys. I think. No. It's... I, I don't know. Oh, I managed to jump. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I swear, how's it going? Does it look fantastic graphical wise? <laughs> it doesn't. What you press has kind of no bearing on what actually happens on the screen. It feels like. I mean, where are we going? I'm not doing this. I mean, the computer's throwing out fireballs. It's. Doing all sorts, but can I do any of it? Mm, no, I can't stop blocking. It won't move. Oh, I'm now stuck in the air. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm down. I mean, what is this? I want to make clear something as well, is this was a commercially available product that they released. I think it would have cost you about 15 quid. And it came in a box, you could buy it in boots or wherever, you know. Because back in the day, Boots the Chemist, they sold, they sold games. Uh... I, I, you'd, you'd pay actual money for this, and you'd take it home. So someone went, "That'll do." This is unplayable. I want to. I want to point out that this does not. In, I'm pressing buttons, and nothing happens. Like I'm pressing fire to attack, and he's, there we go. I got an attack in. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. This. Oh, you can press buttons to change the colours as well. By the way, there we go. Let's let's change some colours. Oh, oh yeah. This is this is even better. Yeah, let's. Oh yeah. Mhm. Mm this is what I want. This is how I want to play the game. This is when I play Street Fighter Two in the arcade. This is exactly the uh, experience I thought uh, I wanted to have. Yeah. This is. Mm, this is so good. Mm. You must defeat Shang Long to stand a chance. For fuck's sake. For fuck's sake. That was a product they wanted you to pay money for. <laughs> Holy shit. It's just, it's, it, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you, honestly. Um, yeah, well, I mean, swearing at the time, obviously, this spectrum was an afterthought. Because it was it was dead, uh, practically. Um, what else can I, what else can I show you? The R type there. Fantasy World Dizzy. Code Masters. Remember Code Masters? Back before they made nothing but racing games, and they were did Code Masters get bought by recently? Was it EA? Did EA buy them?
Well, that was the thing, wasn't it, Has? I mean, like, if you bought a game and it was bad, it was bad forever. There was no patches. Jug of cold water. You throw the jug of water onto the fire and the flenches are qu quickly quenched. I don't really need the boulder right now. Is it? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was. Well, this is, this is how Codemaster started making Dizzy games and they made a lot of Dizzy games. Oh, wow, Spencer, I would have loved to have done work experience at Codemasters. But yeah, you'd, you'd wander around and you'd, you'd pick up objects and use the objects to solve, solve puzzles and it was... Some people hated Dizzy. Some people really fucking hated Dizzy. Uh, I was not one of them. Mr. Ian Higton of uh, Eurogamer was not one of them. He loves Dizzy. And Dizzy was why I made Higgy. The original Higgy on the PC was based heavily on Dizzy. Let's, let's speak to Dennis. What are you doing here, Denzel? Don't you know it's dangerous here? Hey, stay cool, Diz. I thought I... I sorry, I saw the king leave and thought I'll check out the castle. But Daisy and I were caught. I was thrown in the dungeons and Daisy's been taken to the wizard's castle. Oh, we'd all wondered where you two had gone. I'm too busy to help, but here's your rope I, you lent me last week. Thanks, Denzel, you little shit. Oh yeah, I've lifted the foot close up. Um, this Dizzy game I did actually complete. Um, didn't complete that many of the games, if I'm going to be honest. I was only young at the time. Oh shit, okay, uh, oops. That didn't happen, you didn't see that happen. Oh, I need the, I need the meat for that bit. Oh, I wonder what the piece of rope's for, the piece of rope's for the crocodile over the other side, okay. Let's go. We'll do a little bit of this and then we'll move on. Piece of rope. You nimbly tie the rope around the gate of snout. Uh, I forgot how to get past the dragon there. Great. Bottle of whiskey. What is that for? Gone. Forgotten. You look up at the picture, it's you in your last adventure, Treasure Island, is he? Nice little advert for the uh, previous game. Yeah. Oh look, a nice link to all my mo uh, social media and my Discord server, which is open now. Not exactly busy on the, on the uh, Discord server, but... Hopefully it'll get there, you know, hopefully. Oh, there's the bone I needed, yeah, mm-hmm. Okay. Niv, no, I, I was just saying before, people, some people really don't like Dizzy. Uh, I'm not one of them, I do like the Dizzy games. And they had Seymour as well, do you remember Seymour? There's... Seymour was a game very similar to Dizzy by Codemasters, and what happened is that... Um, Codemasters wanted games where Dizzy went into uh, a more realistic, modern world. And the Oliver Twins who made Dizzy went, no. That's, that's not fucking Dizzy. Um, oh shit. Ha ha ha! That's not where I put this, is it? The Codemasters went fine. And, uh, oh shit, no.
And so they invented Seymour. Oh, shit. Seymour in the movie show. Oh, well. So that's how Seymour came about, is they wanted a, a dizzy game set in the set in the modern world. Oliver Twins said no, so they made they made uh, they made Seymour. Monty Python. There's a game for you. Did I not put Manic Miner on here? I did put Jet Set Willy. You know, this is hacked, so I don't need to show you, but... Uh, yeah. This is... You, you know people complain about DRM now, right? DRM, bad, bad, bad juju, basically. Um, back in the day, some games to, present, to prevent uh, piracy would come with sheets of paper with codes on, and you'd have to look at the sheet of paper and give the code. Uh, and they were printed, it was like black, black paper with black ink on it. So you couldn't photocopy it. Well, people would like like write it, write the entire sheet down, you know, manually, and then photocopy that. I don't know about the first. They are. They are so different. So here we. Oh, let's turn this down. Fucking hell. So I have this game, Dr Dragon Talk of Avalon, and this has one of those sheets in it. Here is the sheet, the original sheet from the game. The ink has disappeared off of it. It's worn off. Dissolved. This is the code sheet. And without this sheet of paper, you can't play the game. It loads up. You can't play it because you need this sheet of paper to get past. I can't read. <laughs> Thankfully, I downloaded it. No, they didn't give a shit about epilepsy people. Not, a, not, a, not a shit. Oh, you're referring to your, yeah, no. I didn't. I did not remember that it used that it did that. I can never remember how to do this. If you want eyes and ears being dead, I'll put Manic Miner on in a second, which is even worse. All together now, if I were a rich man. So here's a thing about Jet Set Willy. Um, okay, so to complete the game, you have to com you have to collect all the flashing objects, uh, which you might have seen dotted around, uh, which was really difficult to do. Uh, but in one of the rooms, one of the rooms, uh, how do I say this? Okay, so if you fell too far, you would lose a life. And when you lost a life, it would put you back where you entered the room. Like that. Uh, oh shit, I can't get past this now. Fuck. But what would happen is one of the pieces were placed just so... Just in the wrong position, basically. So, collect it, you had to jump from another screen. Onto the onto that screen and then get the piece that way. Uh, but the, the drop underneath the piece was too big and you would die. So it would then respawn you on screen where you came in and you dark again and fall instantly and die and die and die and die and die and, die and then you lose all your lives and the game could not be completed. Uh, and there's no patches. You couldn't buy. You couldn't go online. People complain about games that are, that, that have patches these days, right? Uh, when this game was released, you literally could not complete the game. Like, it was rock solid to begin with, you know. You literally could not complete it. 
And what they did, they put a poke out in the in the uh, in the magazines of the day um, after the fact, and you had to enter the poke every time you wanted to play the game, basically to, to fix that fault. And then later editions of the game, shit. Later editions of the game uh, were fixed, but obviously you would have to rebuy it. And I think you could, I think you could send your game off or something. Oh, shit. Let's just die. Let's just die. We're gonna die. Yeah, this is if I were a rich man. But yeah. So don't let anyone tell you that games these days are bad because they have to be patched. Because back in these days, back in the 80s, they fucking just sold your broken games. And what could you do about it? Absolutely goddamn nothing. <laughs> uh, oh, Manic Miner, here we go. You thought Jet Set Willy was back from music. <laughs> okay, what you need to know about Manic Miner is one, it's a very famous game, uh, to a certain extent anyway. And it was the first game on the ZX Spectrum to have in-game music. Um, it was believed to be pretty much impossible to do before this game came out. This music, I know, right, it's... Uh, Call of the Mountain King, I think. No, it's not, is it? Is it? Maybe it is. Certainly a, a reduced version of it, yeah. But Minor Willy um, is in the mind collecting all these items, right? He's working on his heart, but yeah, exactly. Um, and basically, you earned so much. If you completed the game, he earned a lot of money and became rich, and that's where Jet Set Willy came along. Jet Set Willy shows Minor Willy, uh, who is this character here, rich after a party with a hangover being made by his wife to clean the house. That's what Jet Set Willy was. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> Eight bit old towers. I know, right? Um I'll very quickly as well, I wanna show you the first Monty Mole game. Oh Maria was that Maria was the housekeeper, that's right, you're right. The housekeeper would not let you go to bed and nurse your hangover until you to clean the house up. The mansion, even. Yeah. So, uh, this game, Monty Mole, is a scab. Back in the 1980s, there was the very famous miner strike. Uh, where miners in in Sheffield for a start, Spencer. Yeah. Um, were striking in protest of Tory cuts. Um, you good, thanks. You were playing games. Excellent. Love, love to hear that you're playing games. Love a lurker. Hi, shock. Um, and Margaret Thatcher basically broke those strikes by, uh, you know, being ultra ruthless, basically. Um, anyway, Monty Mole is a scab, and the game is you're breaking the picket line to go into the mine and collect lots of different things and become rich. So, yeah, that's the game. So you start off the game, you've got to collect this bucket for some reason. This miner that comes out to chase you, that's supposed to be Arthur Scargill.
But we're in the mines now, and we, we collect the... Mm -hmm. Oh shit, it fell too far. Again, you get gamers these days complaining about political... Oh, I keep politics out of games! Uh, guess what, bitches? This is 1983. <laughs> and it's a political game. Kiss my ass. <laughs> Um, I remember playing another game where uh, Arab terrorists had placed a bomb in the Houses of Parliament and you had to find it and def defuse it. I can't remember what it's called though, but I have played it recently. Um, there's uh, another game called Split Personalities, which is uh, a sliding block puzzle where you make faces of, um, of famous world leaders. Uh and each, each level has, like, items that you have to deal with that relate to the world leader. So, like, in the Ronald Reagan level, you're, like, having to dispose of blocks with the word nuke written on them. <laughs> or I think it might have just been the atomic symbol, I forget now. Uh, so, for instance, you know, so that, that was his level, and then there was, like, a Thatcher level, and a, a, a Gorbachev level, and stuff like that. So we were not short on politically themed games. Uh, Sp Spitting Image, the puppet show, had a game as well, which was very political because you, you, it was a fighting game where you, you know, one-on-one -on -one fighter where you chose the the world leader you want to play as, and then you could beat people to death as the Pope and stuff like that. Ah, balls. Why did Monty die so fast? Aren't three lives enough to last? The hazards that confront a mole in his thirst for precious coal. Don't let Monty die in vain. Press a key and try again. Um, but yes, uh, the second game was Monty is Innocent. Um, and you didn't play as Monty Mole in that. You played as Sam Stote. And Sam Stote was breaking Monty out of jail because he was in jail for breaking the picket lines. Uh, the third game, Monty on the Run, I showed you earlier because it's the first game I ever played. Uh, Monty on the Run, because Monty had um, escaped from jail, thanks to Sam, and was on the run from the from the law. And the aim of the game was to escape with your ill-gotten money um, and buy yourself a nice island somewhere to live on. I'm not joking. That was That was the game. Politics and games. What do I want to play now? We've got about we've got about fifteen minutes, I reckon. Shit, I think, oh, I know. Let's show you a modern game. Actually, no. First, let's give you a basis here. Let's give you. Uh, what would be a good racing game on this? I'd say Chase HQ, but I couldn't get that to work before. What were some 3D racing games on this? The Weck Le Mans, basically. You never realised it was kind of a baddie? Yeah, I don't think many people kind of... Um, thought about it. Racing games, anyway, were quite, anyway, were quite popular. Oh, no, I've got a better idea. Not this one. Go to O. Does anybody remember the game Outrun in the in the arcades? Let's go for another another uh, arcade conversion. Mm. So they brought it to the spectrum. You know, I, I'm not going to assume the age of people watching. Press, I'm pressing the players pressed. Shit. Okay. Well, that's not working. Do I have a tap file of that? 
I think that was just... Oh, that was a tap fire, what? Uh, what am I doing? Do they though, Spencer? Do they? I wonder how I get this to go now then. Normally it loads the auto. Normally when it comes to multi-load, this, this device does it automatically. I don't know why it's not. Uh, let's try that other outrun tap file. I think that might be outrun to outrun Europa. Or Turbo Outrun. We'll give it a go. Yeah, Outrun Europa. Fine. Whatever. Oh, look at these great graphics. Make your eyes bleed. And that sound. Holy shit, I've never played this before. Um, it feels really bad to play. It looks awful. Again, this was a product people expected you to pay for. I've got to go right, I've got to go right. Turbo, yeah. Wow. Sounds like someone's trying to jump through the ceiling above me. Don't know what's going on. Yeah, now I've got an urge to play Road... Yeah, Road Rash. Road Rash not on the Spectrum, thankfully. Although I do have it on the Amiga. Okay, do you know what? I don't think I can actually... My, I, me is what you had it on too, yeah, cool. Cool. Um, I don't think I can actually put up with this game much longer, because it, it's literally hurting my eyes. And ears also. How much... How long does this go for? Oh, the police are after me. Fucking hell, okay. We had that. What was another one? Cisco Heat was another one. Let's see if I can find that. Cisco. I'm, I've got a point to this. There is a point to me showing you these games. We'll get to it in a second. Um... Oh yeah, here we go. Fire to start. Mm -hmm. Look at these graphics. What, what buttons? What buttons? What? What? What's the controls? Anyway, the state of this is what I'm trying to say. I don't know why I can't control it. It seems to be playing all right by itself, to be quite honest. I'm not doing anything here. There's, where, where are the corners? There's the corner. Oh, oh, look at that smudgy mess of, of red. I, mean, I seem to be doing all right by myself, you know. I don't. Yeah, whatever. Um... If I go to my modern games folder, 2021, we've got a game called Travel Through Time, Volume 1, Northern Lights. Press any key. This is a racing game, viewed from behind like those games before. Um, 
I'm going to listen to the chip music. Oh, 50. Set in 50 Sweden. Okay, so it's got cutscenes. It's got cutscenes. Look at this. My shooting star. Day breaks. Your little man, he comes out. Again, this is a cutscene. He opens his garage. It is a bit, isn't it? You have no time limit, so all you need to do is get to your destination point. Cool. And instantly, look how smooth this is. Look how nice... Yeah, this is nice looking. We got crossings, we got all the cars on the road. Um, the car's a bit lumpy to control, but it is a 1950s car, supposedly. I mean, it's still a bit, you know, the frame rate still isn't quite what you would want, maybe. Oh my god, I'm getting battered. Thankfully, there's no time limit on this one. It's certainly a lot smoother. It's not, it's not 60 frames a second. The, the Spectrum could not do 60 frames a second on the best games. Um. You'll, you'll go through like tunnels and stuff and uh, at one point you have to stop at a level crossing because there's a train going across I don't think that's oh, reach the man on the that's right, you reach the guy on the tractor oh, cut scene, good morning Uncle Bjorn oh hi Sven where are you going so early? I heard that the guys are racing on the old road on the weekends. I want to try. Racing? Oh, Sven, I wouldn't advise. I wouldn't advise you too, Uncle Bjorn, but I'm still going. All right, Sven, but be careful. Okay, as you say. And then we just keep we just keep driving. I thought that was the I thought that was the one I was going to have to stop at, and then I realised. I think it's after a tunnel. Once we go through a tunnel, I'll be looking out for it. Well, I smashed those signs away. That was great. Oh, oh, crash! Oh, I got hit by a train. <laughs> then you have to start from the very beginning again. Dead. Uh, I've got a snapshot later on in the game. Oh, it doesn't work. Bollocks. Oh well. Uh, do you want me to do oh, train? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend Quantum Sheep made this game. Uh, Quantum Sheep, I met in person at a Eurogamer Expo. Um, I can't remember what year it was. 2014, I think. And I was, we were talking about making games, and I said, oh, I don't think I could ever do it. And he said, just try. Just try. And he said, uh, try Game Maker Studio on the PC. So I did. And I've been making games ever since. So so, so Sheepy is the, is the guy, basically, uh, who got me into making games in the first place. And this is one of his. Very cute it is, too. Look at it go. This is, this is, he made this last year. Yeah. Just to think, all of these lives changed, all these games made. Um, all thanks to Sir Clive Sinclair, who died two weeks ago now. Um, certainly, I don't know if I would have been so into games when I was a kid, if not for the Spectrum. Uh, would I be streaming now? Would I be into games now? I don't know. Would the UK games industry be anything like it is now if it wasn't for Sir Clive? Um, 
Obviously, I can't tell you, but <laughs> but our, in, on our common path, our, our history will show that he was there uh, at the forefront. But because what you got to understand is that computers at the time um, were extremely expensive. Um, previous to this, it would cost the equivalent of like three thousand pounds or something like that to buy a computer up until. Sir Clive released the, the ZX80 and then the ZX81. Um, and then the Spectrum. And the way he kept prices down as well is that he would release them as a, as a kit for you to assemble by yourself. So you'd actually have to put the computer together. Um, but you could buy them pre-assembled, like, but it was cheaper to buy the kits. And build them yourself. Oh, an extra life, excellent. Uh, and because of that, it was like under a hundred pounds, and you know, to, to buy a to buy one of those. And it just bought it just bought computers into the into the into homes uh, of people who otherwise would not have been able to afford them. What the fuck is going on? I've forgotten this game entirely. So I mean, that, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get over here is the kind of importance that the, the Spectrum and later on, like the Amstrad and the Commodore, did play. Uh, when you when you talk when you talk British in, in, inventors, Sir Clive's got to be right up there, um, and that's why I wanted to do the stream. Really, it's just to I, I don't there's. Obviously, a lot of people who are watching now... Uh, oh, fuck. I messed that up, didn't I? A lot of people watching now will, will know who he is and, and so forth. But, uh, I suspect there's a fair few people who might be watching who would otherwise come to my streams uh, and not know who he was and not know really what the Spectrum was all about and not know that there's still... Uh, there's not, still not a group of people bi uh, building and making these games to this very day. And that's the legacy he's left behind. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else to say about him, really. Uh, but the thing is, I, 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 when the media would talk about him in, in latter days, especially in latter days, oh, where do I go now? Oh, I see. Um, they would talk about the Sinclair C5, which was his electric bike, which was a complete failure at the time. And it's only now that we're starting to really use electric vehicles, um, and it was far too ahead of its time. And also, it wasn't, you know, the battery wasn't up to the task, and it was not a good product, you know, like, because you would so low to the ground, it felt like you were going to be squished by every car going past. So that didn't sell very well, and that was a failure, and that was kind of the end of the, the line for Sinclair, really. Um, that's why he sold the Spectrum um, rights to Amstrad. Is because he needed it was the only way for him to stay afloat at the time. Was to uh I don't get through there now. He was limited to the technologies of the day, yeah exactly. Um, but also there was other bad bad design decisions behind the uh Behind the C's five as well. Let's not let's not pretend that it was a perfect product that was just held back by technology. Held back by technology. Uh, absolutely not. I don't know what. To, oh, oh well. Let's play something else. Let's see what else I got. Um, and then of course there was. Um, he later on married a stripper like twenty years his 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 younger as well. So there was it was kind of that side to him as well. The, um I don't know quite else what to say about that, but uh <laughs> it was uh Yeah, it was a bit of a, a womanizer as well, I guess. Um I don't know what any of these games are. Let's choose a random one. Bubble. Bubble what? Bubble Bomb Bros. Well, look at this. This is nice and colourful. Okay. OP. Q. 
Q. OP and M. OP and M. There we go. That's the case. What, what is it? I don't remember this at all. I mean, this is only from recent. Oh, shit. This is like only a couple of years old, but still. I don't think I've ever actually played this. Whoa. What the? I don't know what I'm doing. Collect banana. Return to monkey. How do we get those bananas? What the? You can only. Ah, oh, okay. The platform's collapsed. Um. Oh, time's up. Okay. Because right. I can only jump on those up arrows. So that's why I'm having such trouble with it. Oh, 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 oh okay. Uh, I can also destroy the floors as well. Yep. Cool. Whoa, wait, whoa, wait, wait, I'm thinking about how. Whoa, mm. where am I? Uh, why, why is the soap appear? What's soap? Does the monkey require soap? Some str strange concepts of games. I thought I made some strange games, but this is... Oh. This is taking the biscuit. Or taking the banana, one of the two. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I think... I think I might call it there if I'm going to be honest. Uh, because it is my bedtime, I have work in the morning. So let me just pull up my uh, my list of people I follow. Let's see if we can find someone to, to raid here. Oh, there's plenty of people on tonight. I don't know who, though. I'll tell you what, I've really enjoyed the stream. I don't know whether I'll ever do another s s Spectrum stream. Uh, maybe I will, but not for a long time yet, I don't think. Uh, because the thing I found about Spectrum games is that... Another visitor. Oh. thank you for following. Stay forever. That, that made me jump. Uh, this, I, yes, I was, I was pleased with how the Spectrum looked, uh, to be honest. Considering it's 35 years old and kind of... If I pick it up, it's kind of falling apart a bit. We'll ignore that. Um, but the thing about Spectrum games is I can't really spend a lot of time with them these days. Uh, I find uh, a few a few minutes with each game is really all I need to kind of get that um, to, to, to get that hit basically. <laughs> um, but it's been I've had a I've had fun talking about the games more than playing them. I think and talking about what they mean to me and talking about the context that they came in and, and stuff. So that was enjoyable. Uh, uh, and wish you a very good, very good evening, a very good week. I love you all lots. This is me trying to rapidly copy and paste the, the message. Uh, yeah, see you later. You watched it. You can't unwatch it.